Something is off with the information from Aquaribum State on the new cases of COVID-19 confirmed by the MCDC. While the State Commissioner for Health, Dominic Ukwong, believes there is a need for reconfirmation of results announced, the State Governor, Udom Emmanuel, appears to confirm the MCDC's announcement that indeed there are cases in Aquaribum State. There's been no retraction or explanation as to the earlier comments by the Health Commissioner. Who do we believe? And should the NCDC inform states before announcing new cases? Joining us live in the studio is Jide Ologu, a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us. And we will I'll be speaking right away with a journalist in Aquaibum State, Basi Ibiati Soho. Thank you very much for joining us, Basi. Uh, good evening. Uh, nice, to, nice to be on. Okay, quickly, can you bring us up to speed on what is going on in Aquaibum State? What is the update on the situation, the seemingly miscommunication between the health commissioner and the state governor? Thank you very much again for having me. Um, the situation at the moment is that Aquaibum um, has dropped five cases of coronavirus. And um, that was confirmed yesterday by the state governor, Jimmy Manuel, in a state broadcast. And um, it's been a little bit dramatic in the state since um, the beginning of the week. Uh, we had a um, situation where the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Dominic Rufbong, had some issues earlier on with some health professionals. And uh, that was sorted out. And um, when the NC, um, NCDC announced that there were five cases in the state, um, they immediately debunked that and contested, according to him, the statement he read out, contested that particular result and said that the right process was not taken. And so, um, Dr. Chikwe, during the presidential briefing yesterday, immediately debunked that saying that staff of the NCDC took samples of um, the cases and it was conducted in a dose state, in, you know, the oldest um, uh, yeah, disease yeah, infection yeah. hospital in Nigeria. So immediately after then, we had the state governor giving out a state broadcast where he confirmed that we actually had five cases in Aquaibum. So as it stands now, whatever the commissioner said earlier on, that was just about two hours before the governor gave the state broadcast. So for now, um, the whole state is standing with what is done, and uh, we have five cases. Do, do you, or, or let me rephrase that, should we expect some sort of apology or retraction from the health commissioner uh, just to clear the air? Do you see that well, happening? I I certainly doubt um, because if um, yeah, there was going to be an apology, I'm sure maybe the governor would have directed him or maybe included that in the state broadcast. Uh, but unfortunately, it's been 24 hours or more than 24 hours since the commissioner challenged the result of the NCDC, and uh, we are yet to hear anything. We're here to hear a thing from the commissioner, like an apology. So I, I think first, right now, they will what the state government or the state governor announced in this podcast. All right, before we let you go, could you just give us an idea of what the mood is like in Aquaibum State when it comes to the lockdown announcement and, of course, the social distancing and other um, moves advised by the government? Um, well, it was uh, kind of surprising for most people in the state because um, they thought the announcement by the governor for a total shutdown with, um, um, uh, time was not given to the residents to prepare. The governor did make that broadcast by 7 p.m. last night, and it's according to him, it was to the immediate effect. And so there was panic buying made last night. Uh, the major market to buy um, uh, at the time, the time market it was a very serious market. Um, but later on, 
most of the citizens went on the social media asking the governor to give them time at least to stock up to get some things on. So earlier on today, the governor actually um, gave some time and then uh, asked the citizens to go about getting what they need to get. So as it stands right now, the official lockdown started by 5 p.m. It was pushed forward to give um, you know, residents and indigenous enough time to maybe get what they wanted to get. Um, so as it stands now, um, the official lockdown is um, All right, Basi. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. All right, Jude, over to you. Um, some have described this as unprecedented. Yeah, we've not heard anywhere since this outbreak that a state government is questioning the disease control center on disputing the figures being announced and asking for a reconfirmation of those tests. What's your thought? I think the understanding of that should come from the fact that people are likely to panic when you hear that we have the outbreak of COVID-19 in our community. How do we respond to that? Then other issues are how do we even handle, you're talking about the isolation centers, the capacity to manage it. And again, we have the reporting procedure here, which is alleged to have been breached. For example, I expect that the NCDC should be in collaboration with the state. And the Ministry of Health is a critical stakeholder in this. So that even if you are carrying out a test, you should be in touch, you should be on the same page with the state. But now that the reconfirmation has been done, it's obvious that COVID-19 has found an entrance into Akwa Ibom State. So do I, do I infer from what you're saying that the, there should be, a, I mean, the NCDC should communicate with the state before announcing results? I, should that I, be a protocol? That is my own position. In fact, the president, when he was addressing the nation, described this as a national issue, all right, and calling for collaboration. And we have not in any way eroded the sovereignty of state, so to say, because we have not restructured in a way that you now say, okay, we, we need to act for you. So I expect that in crisis management like this, there should be a collaboration. But what is coming to the table is to make us appreciate the process of crisis management. We have the pre-crisis stage, we have the incident stage, and you have the post-crisis stage. Before now, how you communicate should have been established. But if we were living under the assumption that we may not have a crisis, definitely uh, you cannot shy away from hiccups like this. But the basic thing now is that the state should get better from this and try to sort out the communication relationship with the national uh, structure. Okay, what worries you the most about this development, especially now? Should we be having um, such dispute arising uh, and what ways going forward should the NDC, um, NCDC conduct itself? The NCDC should now realize the impact of letting the state know, even when you have information, before disclosing the information, because after disclosing the information, you may not be in a position to manage the consequences. The consequences will be left with the stage. And having said that, I don't think we should spend more time debating the issue of communication, rather we should focus on how to prevent further spread of the coronavirus in Aqua Ibom State that has a huge population because we know that this is, in fact, by the grace of God, we are even yet to enter the epidemic level in Nigeria. Talk less of the pandemic that is in the global arena. So we must do everything now to ensure that we have the relevant facilities in place and that we prevent the spread. And that's why I, I know also that the governor is working on locking down, even if not uh, on a strict basis, the, the state and ensuring the social distance and all the precautions that the citizens within that state need to embark on to ensure that the virus does not spread further. Okay, um, let's look at the tracing. Nigeria is still tracing, and now the figure is way up, 6,000. Um, 
among the reasons for this lockdown is to allow officials trace these numbers. Do you think this time will be enough and will they be able? How hopeful are you? It should be enough if they are efficient about it. And of course, this is the time the relevance of data comes to play. When people travel into Nigeria, can we really track them on a table? And what I mean by that is that in some other countries, you go in there, your address, your, I mean, your immediate movement will be documented. So when it comes to tracing, it doesn't take them more stress. So can we upgrade our system to also embrace that? And it should be easy because right now we are even dealing with the secondary level of tracing. Those who came into the country, brought in the virus, that they've had contacts with other persons within the country who have contacted. So it's now like a web. But I, I, I pray that the government officials, that God will help them. But talking about the system, mm. I doubt if we have a reliable system that can help us effectively. But learning from COVID-19, I think we should now begin to embrace the importance of technology and upgrading our system, not just for political reasons, but for governance reasons. Fair enough. Do you see an extension to this two weeks lockdown? Because people are already, I mean, I don't know if you see the videos of what some people are doing to keep themselves occupied. Um, do you see a continuation or are you hopeful that we will get to that flat curve that we've been talking about? You know, whether we get to the flat curve or not, there is a reality now that we have a very vulnerable economy. In some other countries, people gladly stayed at home because the government may deliver whatever they need at their doorsteps. Have we come to that level? You see, so we have lockdown instructions where there is no electricity, there's no water supply, food, money to even acquire these basic necessities. And it tells us that we don't even have a foundation for solid welfare, that we support the directives we give. Don't forget that, at least by research reports, we have about half of the population of Nigeria within the poverty bracket. So, and you are taking 14 days off a man or woman who ends living on a daily basis. And I think this should instruct us. And that's why I suspect that the federal government is rising up to the occasion by setting up the economy uh, sustainability team. Uh, team that will be headed by the Vice President Seven Man uh, Panel that we reposition our economy. And you see, I'm glad we are discussing this. If you look at Section 16 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it has stipulated that, that our economy should be driven in a way, that our resources should be harnessed in a way that we have an efficient economy, a sustainable development-based uh, economy that provides maximum happiness, care for the people. And by extension, an economy that does not allow the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few. So, and, you know, take attending to the welfare of the people. So if we incorporate this into the governance culture, it will help us. Let me bring an example here. Yeah, you, you need to wrap up because we're out yeah. of time. Uh, in Akwa Ibom is now dealing with cases. Cross River State is yet to have any, any. case. You know what the governor has done? He has instructed the garment factory to mass produce face and nose masks for the citizens in uh, Cross River State freely they are to distribute food to them. And he even said that if you look at section 14, subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 99 as amended, that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. And Governor Yade said, right now, we have social security and the need to provide welfare for the people and keep them from harm. And if we make this governance mindset the primary approach of harnessing the resources of this country, we may be further prepared. And we pray that we come out of COVID-19 stronger, wealthier, and better. I, I hear a lot of optimism in your submission. Yes, yes, these are Nigerians for you. We love this country. We are optimistic. And the leaders should leverage on that by doing what is right. Right now, you know, China is coming out of this better. 
I know, I know, I know you have so much to muscle, share, but we need to end now. In terms of industries, yeah. in terms of even sending things out to the world. I was monitoring this afternoon that we are even expecting some, uh, some things Thank to come you. in from China. So when does my nation also rise up? to that industrialized stature You're hopeful, and begin and to I'm hopeful join we will get that. the League of Developed Countries. We will get there. So and hope like that this COVID-19 will be a big lesson for us to redefine our governance uh, templates and join the developed countries. <laughs> I'm with you on that, very much with you on that. Let these spirits of uh, patriotism, you know, spill over to post-COVID-19 Care pandemic. for the people, develop the nation. Thank you very much for coming on the program. God bless Nigeria. God bless Nigeria indeed. Thank you for staying with us thus far. We're going for a short break. And when we return, I will give you my take. We'll be right back. Undoubtedly, our lives have changed. The things most of us thought we will never be able to do is now being done, from staying home to getting diagnosis and treatment in our own country, to confronting unexpected challenges occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. Until there is a vaccine or a flattening of the curve, more changes to our way of living is expected. Now, while the government must work harder to create a wiser approach to managing our unique challenges, it behoves on us as citizens to beside engaging in constructive criticism, play our role, which at this time is well spelt out. Maintain basic hygiene, observe social distancing, and for most, stay home. Do not peddle on verified information. Stay informed via the right channels like Plus TV Africa. And most importantly, find ways to keep your spirit up. Like I say, this too shall pass. Until next time, please be well.